Hello and welcome to the Two Man Power Trip of Wrestling. I'm your host, JP John Paz. With me today is a very, very, very special guest. Some consider him to be the GOAT, the greatest of all time. I know I do. He is a 16-time former World Heavyweight Champion, two-time WWE Hall of Famer. He is the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Mr. Flair, how you doing? What's going on today, sir? How are you? Doing good, and of course... I'm sorry. I'm great, thank you. Thanks for having us on the show. Yes, and of course, Kelly and James also from the Ric Flair comic. How are you guys doing? Great, great. Thanks for having us, John. Yes, thank you. So, Nate, what's going on in your world? I know you're keeping very, very busy, obviously, with the comic and with your last match. Yeah, at the last match, actually, James and Kelly have been doing a lot more of the comic than I have because I've, I've had to travel a little bit um, and uh, to have some family stuff, a wedding, and then my granddaughter's graduation. So they've been holding the fort down, but we're all back together now. And then uh, I'm training for that match I have in uh, in uh, Nashville, the 31st of July. So um, and that's basically what we're hoping to really kick this thing to a whole new level. But we're, you know, put, putting the components together now. Any idea who the opponent or opponents will be? No, we're sold out without, without opponents yet. Wow. Anybody in mind you'd like to wrestle? Yeah, but I can't tell you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Watch, read the comic. I'm a secret agent, man. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's pretty Hopefully cool, though. I- only I know. Even these two don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. In the comic, like the the plane crash. What if it something else happened, right? I mean, what if you passed away and they turned you into a secret agent? But tell us a little bit about the comics. That's so cool. Well, it, it started. Uh, we started putting it together two years ago. Uh, James and then a gentleman. We decided to not be involved anymore, and then. Uh, I asked Kelly because she liked it and took interest in it. She wanted to um, put the money into it, and she jumped right in. So now we're partners, and there's, um, you know, which is always better to have an equity position and something, that, especially if you've got. And then Kelly has a lot of sweat equity in it alone, so probably more than I do because she's can do all this stuff electronically that I can't. So, um, um, and then of course James is a guy that. Put it as, as actually Kelly and I have sat down with him to learn more about it. I've, I've been to a thousand Comic Cons over the years, and I happened to be a couple that Stan Lee was at before he passed away, and I just I couldn't get over it. I mean, you know, those Comic Cons are it's like when that what's the Quinn girl? The, Harley Quinn? Yeah, when that, that movie came out. Yeah. Go to a Comic Con, there'd be a thousand girls dressed up like Harley Quinn. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it'd be 100,000 people over a three-day period, and there'd be 10,000 Harley Quinns. I'm not kidding you. I mean, it's unreal. So, like, Stan Lee had these incredible lines. Adam West did with Batman. I mean, it's... And I didn't understand the comic book world, but I have friends that now, now that I'm now that I'm part of it, I you know, I kind of... When you're part of something, you pick up on conversations that normally you wouldn't. And then it's fun to hear, but they... There's a huge faction in the United States of people all over the world that like comic books. So we, we think that James, I mean, Kelly and I think that James has put together something real special. It's easy yeah. to tell stories about me. <laughs> my, life, my life is a little different. <laughs> and I always thought there was a huge, um, like, running parallel, the comic book world and the wrestling world, because really the wrestling world is the comic book world, you know, come alive. And obviously growing up loving wrestling and Rick, and he was, he's one of the most interesting uh, wrestlers ever, you know, traveling the world back in the seventies and eighties, you know, going from territory to territory, defending and all the stories that I read here on podcasts like yours or shows like yours. And now getting to talk to Rick and finding out some of those stories. And it's just like, it'd be so cool to do. We compare it to like big fish. Have you ever seen that movie, John, big fish? Yes. Yes. Like what's fact, what's fiction. Um, a lot of it is fact, and uh, just I mean, he very well could be a secret agent. I'm not fully convinced. I, I could be, yeah. Like <laughs> Kelly and I, yeah, we pretty it may, it may not be resolved until the day I die and they open up the box. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I mean, there's so and true. I, I have to give props to the artist Rafael Lorario, he's a Brazilian and he's just so talented. And if you have seen the comic, you can just 
I mean, his likeness of Rick and the events and his action sequences are just absolutely incredible. I think this is one of the best, as far as art goes, comics that I, I've seen, whether it's wrestling or not wrestling. And it's just really fun. And the whole thing kind of, uh, you know, it's an honor to have met Rick and now to be in business with him. And to do this comic is just uh, like he said earlier, it's like two years and two years. And finally, it's 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 finally happening. So it's very exciting. And Kelly, her and I are going to be pounding the pavement, um, selling the comic, uh, reaching out to retailers, to consumers. And we have a lot of cool collectibles and, and stuff planned in the future, too. A lot of stuff planned. Yes. It's funny, Rick, it's crazy to think like, okay, I grew up in the 80s and the 90s as I'm growing up and you're one of the most popular wrestlers ever. Somehow you might be more popular now than ever before. Are you sensing that too, which is crazy to even yeah. think? Yeah, I, I do feel that. This last match thing, when, I, when they first brought it to me, I thought, eh, I don't know. But when we sold out the uh, fairgrounds in, in uh, what, 21 hours, 5,000 people, I said, Okay, this might be pretty cool. It's fun. About it. <laughs> yeah, we're selling merchandise like crazy. It's it, you know, I was skeptical, not skeptical, to try it, and it, and it gave me a goal to, to get back in really good shape. But you know, when you're out when you throw your name out there, it's, <laughs> you're either, either going to make it or you're not. So the only thing that can mess this up right now is if I didn't perform at a high level. So that's what I'm focused on. That's why James and. Uh, Kelly, Kelly does a lot of stuff with me, Albert. She travels through all the signings I have and counts and makes sure that everything is running the right way. Um, but she and James are basically running the comic book stuff while I get ready for the match, and then we're all going to hopefully have a great weekend. <laughs> How is the training going? I see some stuff with Jay Lethal popping up here and there, which yeah. is great. Oh, it's better than that. We. I just had, you know, I had to get over the anxiety of taking my first bumps, you know, with the pacemaker and then I've got blood thinners. And it, 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 but I, I, you know, I, I, I embellished when I said four doctors. I have talked to four. So I just took the opinion I like the best. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny when you when you said that. I, I'm buddies with uh, Kevin Sullivan. You're, you're a good friend, yeah. and he's like forty doctors. What do you go to thirty nine that that didn't want to deal with them? <laughs> no, no. What people don't realize this. It, it, this is medicine. I, I in 2018, I had four heart operations in seven weeks. Right, wow. four different doctors. So, who do you believe? Everybody's got a different theory on what I can do, what I can't do. So the first guy says I can't go skiing. I can't go. Told me never to go above that 10,000 feet. So I went to Vail, went to 20,000 feet, I went skiing. I fell down skiing. I fell down on the ice, ice skate. So if I can do that, I can wrestle. And I'm drinking again, so, which I'm never supposed to be doing. <laughs> so, you know, I just, I, it, it, it's, it's easy to blame any aspect of what I've been through on what could happen, but it's not, I'm not worried about it now. Does that make sense? And I'm just having fun and, uh, I'm enjoying the uh, the competition it, it built, it creates within myself, and just want to show off. You know that if I can do it at 73, and I'll be better than I'll be better fundamentally than 85 percent of the roster either in either company. I'm not talking about flying off the top rope now, but punching, kicking, psychology, wrestling. I'll be better than that in 85. I got another month and a half to train. I, I won't go in there not ready. I'm curious, and, and I talked to Hulk not that long ago, and I asked him, like, okay, who's the GOAT? Who, you know, what's the legacy of Hogan? And he was saying, you know, it, it kind of depends on the fans. But I'm just curious, you in your mind, what is your legacy? Like, we're talking comic books. They're making comic books. You're, you know, you're a big life superhero. Probably the greatest talker of all time. Probably the greatest worker of all time. I mean, these are my opinions. But what what's your opinion? What is the legacy of Ric Flair? Um, well, it changes it every day. But, um what am I trying to say? Um, the, the, my legacy would be entirely different after after the 31st. Right now, if it's just I was a, a great wrestler, um, hard to ever say I was going to be the greatest. I think Shawn Michaels is, is the best in-ring performer. Um, I think Hulk and Steve Austin are the two biggest stars of all time. Um, and I mean, I'm based on who drew the most money in their time frame. You know, does that make sense? Yep. That that's how you 
the, that time you turn over your star. It's the guys that put the ass in the seats. So I, and I certainly was that person in my time, bro. That's, you know, late 70s, 80s, and now we're talking 2022. So we're sold out in Nashville. We haven't got announced my partner, then I sold out again. Or my, who, who I'm wrestling. So that's what matters. It's, it, it's not the money anymore. I've got that. I just, it was a challenge and having people believe in me. And uh, now I have Enthusio and uh, Schiller involved. It's, it's, a, it's a big deal. And I've almost all my celebrity friends from Jim Harbaugh, Brian Clark. Um, I'm not sure right now about That's Mike Tyson, but, but Pete Rose, Mike Tyson. I mean, all my celebrity friends are coming. It's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be more than cool, actually. It's pretty I, awesome, Mike Tyson. Yeah, I saw that he's coming to the roast of Ric Flair. It's yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yep. Are you nervous about guys roasting you, like Tyson and DDP no, and all these I, guys? I got more shit on them than they got on me. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> my thirty for thirty, I told on myself. They haven't told on themselves yet. <laughs> when you're told on yourself, there's nothing more, there's nothing more to do. Yep. Well, I'm not married, so I can't get divorced again. <laughs> <laughs> Very true, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm just curious, though, because we were talking about the horseman before. My favorite is you, Arn, Chris Benoit, and Pillman. Also, another awesome one is you, Arn, Tully, and Barry. Do you have a favorite horseman? That's it right there. Me, why why that one? Because I, I feel at that time, in all fairness, we were the, four of the best workers, four of the top ten best workers in the business. And J.J. will be always considered one one of the top five managers with along with Cornet and Bobby Heenan and uh God, JJ was great. I'm trying to think Cornet, Bobby Heenan. Everybody's gonna have a different, you know, a different thought process on that. But JJ in, in his time frame was as good as there was. And they always say the four best workers in the world were at that time were all together in a group. Like yeah, you, and, you know yeah, we could all talk and work. And we were friends. We got along. There was nobody jealous of anybody. You know what I mean? Yep. James, do you have a favorite uh, horseman? Oh, gosh. I think... Whew, I want to say the same. Barry, Tully, Arn, yeah. and Rick. Barry Wyndham was really... Yeah, that was like at the height. Yeah, he was amazing. Like yeah, the few that you had before. Right. Him, then, oh, so well he, could go, he could go either way. He was great. Mm-hmm. Is it true that sometimes Tully and Arn not would get jealous, but they're like, "Oh, we got to outwork Rick. Oh, we got a Rolex. We got to get a you know, we got to get a bigger Rolex." Is, is that your little competition, friendly competition? It wasn't my competition. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was doing my own thing. <laughs> they're trying to catch up to you. If they wanted to do it, I, I, it was no pressure for me. I just, I was, I was doing my own thing. Whoever got the group together, so I just didn't change. Um, but I think the fact that those guys were so good at Arn and Tully are, they should be individually in the Hall of Fame. If you're looking at the people they put in lately, Jesus Christ. I, I, we don't have to hold different subject, but me and Tully and Arn were great individual workers. So was Barry. He should be by himself. So, but you know how that goes. It's all, yep. it's all politics. Now, I have to mention so, this because I actually this, interviewed. Every percent ability, 50% of politics. Yes, absolutely. I actually did the last ever interview with Dusty Rhodes two days before he passed. So wow. bittersweet because I thought like, okay, we'd be doing more stuff together, more interviews and, and this and that. And all of a sudden he passed. Big focus of the interview was you and your relationship and your feud, arguably one of the greatest feuds ever, two of the greatest talkers ever. Just a little bit of a memory of Dust. Well, he was the most charismatic, without even thinking about the most charismatic wrestler in the history of our business. And he was a he was a, a genius. He came up with the Great American Bash. He came up with Star Key. Those are all things that he thought of. Um, the Bunkhouse Stampede. I mean, he came up with all these themes and theories. And yeah, I mean, he, you know, he gave me my music, the, the Elvis music and Frank Sinatra music. Um, I was coming out with the Sharp Dressed Man by Whitney Houston or by the um, uh, the Pointer Sisters. I can't remember what. Anyway, and then he said, "No, nah, you need that." Same stuff as Elvis. So, um, and we and we just drew. I mean, how many? How many guys draw money against each other for twenty five years? 
We never went to a building that wasn't sold out. We both cut ourselves every night. I mean, we sacrificed a lot more than we had to. And Dusty, could, regardless of what people want to say about what they thought his condition was, he, I must have wrestled him 500 hour broadways, hour draws. So if the town called for it and the promoter called for it, he could go. Make no mistake. And we, we had a lot of fun drinking too. So. <laughs> what was it about him though in the ring that like you guys meshed so well? I mean, you pretty much can mesh with anybody. They always say you could wrestle a broomstick, but you and Dusty it just seemed like louder crowds and, and Dusty, better matches. The the, uh, the epitome of arrogance against the uh, the plumber, or the what, what would you call it? The son of a plumber. White collar versus blue collar. Son of a plumber. Yep. Such well, all the rest are out back and laughing and joking. And me and Nate should be out front cooking and smoking. <laughs> <laughs> why not pass by in a Cadillac you only come through one time <laughs> yeah I also got to mention <laughs> uh, I also got to mention Ricky the Dragon Steamboat because to me those the series best. of matches the greatest yeah. matches people like oh Omega and Okada and Misawa Kawada and Brett Sean like oh you know whatever no way no, Steamboat no. Flair is the best I can't even pronounce the name I know I know what you're talking about yeah Nothing could touch me on Steamboat. I have, I'm very confident in saying that. He's the best baby face of all time. Have a better and yeah, better than anybody. Sean Sean's a great baby face. And Sean's a better worker because he could go both ways. But as far as baby face, Steamboat was the epitome boy. Unbelievable. What is it about your chemistry with him? Because oh, literally it's magic. Huh? Just magic with you guys. Absolute magic. He's a great guy. Yeah. He and a handful of guys. He, Dusty Sting. I'm trying to think of all I've wrestled a lot. He, Dusty Sting. Hulk. Hogan. I love working with Hogan, too. Um, I mean, just um, Harley Race. I mean, just some guys were just special. And certainly um, um, Dusty and uh, Steamboat were real special in my life. Because we were all in our prime at that time. I love going back, and we're going back 30 years. It's 1989 yeah. here, but I love going back and watching those matches. They hold up. They're better than matches today. I, you and Steamboat. Oh, yeah, just, absolutely. Um, Are you kidding? If I was 35 years old right now, they wouldn't be able to afford me. <laughs> <laughs> and, boy, they need help with the ratings now, both of them. <laughs> yeah, big time. Uh, with, that those written down interview, interviews, you, you can tell a mile away whether the kids feel it or not. It's a lot of pressure to read something that doesn't actually come up. It doesn't, you don't actually think, or you don't actually feel it in your heart. And that, that, that's a big difference. I mean, you, you can tell the guys where you take off because if they're taking what they've been handed to memorize and then they get, they put some emotion into it. But that's just talking generically today, and da da da. da it's just it doesn't sell tickets. Do you when think the that, Rock, when the Rock comes back to wrestle Roman, that'll sell tickets? When Steve Austin came back, that sold tickets. And I mean, it, it, it's just a just it's just a different time frame. I mean, it, it's the I, I the, the the talent is great. Make no mistake, they're they're great. There are some great wrestlers, Orton. My daughter, Sasha Banks, his style, like there's a list of great about ten between the two companies. But the um the events sell themselves now as much as the as the wrestlers do. Um because I don't think they turn them loose enough. But I know there's it, it's I want to make sure they get the right advertisers, everybody's gotta be happy. It's it's a whole different world, but it I still love it. I just feel like the, the, the guys that are really great, like Randy and my daughter, and, you know, are, they're held back because they're, it, it, they only want them to go that far. Does that make sense? Yep. They don't, they don't want anybody to become the rock again. It's going to walk off. They don't want anybody to become John or uh, Steve that can say, yeah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and there's, you know what I mean? Like back in the day with Hulk, Hulk said, "Yeah, he did it." Or Hulk said, "No, he wouldn't do it." So, but he had that kind of power. I don't know if that's healthy, but it's Vince won't let that happen again. You see how the club regularly might get in a position where they can say, "Hey, see you." 
So, and I understand that it's business. Do you think also like there's no larger than life characters? There's two, two, you know, it's too scripted. Do you think like that just all plays into the fact that uh, you know everything is down compared to your era? No, I think it'll cut. I think Rome is larger than life. I think my daughter's larger than life. I think Randy Orton's larger than life. I think AJ is larger than life. They got a number of people. It's but they don't let them get larger than they want them to get. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There's never been a better worker period in the company. Than, than my daughter, but you know, she's been going to keep her in check. They keep everybody in check now. They're not going to let this situation get out of control where they can't. Somebody walks off, and all of a sudden, wow, well, how do you replace them? You know what I mean? Because they're, the talent of this limited these days, you, you just don't like. They just signed, I heard, seventy new guys. You know, college athletes. Out of that seventy, I bet two of them make it. A different business. Be a good athlete in college, you got nothing to do with being a wrestler. Time away from home, sacrifice. Three days a week, you're from noon to midnight. I mean, it's a lot. Telling your wife goodbye. Not nothing like it was in my day when I leave for six months. Hell, I didn't even know I was even married. Yeah, <laughs> 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 well, Sheila, I love her. <laughs> Sheila's not your wife's name. Well, that was last week. I mean. <laughs> no, but when you're gone from home for six months, you forget what the hell's going on. Yeah. No, we didn't have cell phones back then. Thank God. <laughs> I was about to say it's a uh, good thing and a bad thing. What, what's that song I called the hotel? And they said, What's that that song that Kid Rock sings? And they called the hotel and asked where it was and Cheryl Crow sings it. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. They just played it. I used, I used to tell the people that run this when I checked in, I'm not here. <laughs> but he calls, say who? <laughs> you gotta check in under an assumed name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that. I don't want anybody that was in the bar looking for me to know I was there, but <laughs> True. Yep. I don't need anybody from the shower that's no more bad. <laughs> but Nature. This is an emergency. <laughs> Do you have any regrets in the business at all? Anything you regret? Yeah, I regret. The, I regret now that I didn't spend more time at home, but I and nobody's going to understand. I couldn't. You can when you work when you work in this business, and two of your kids live in Minneapolis, and the NWA doesn't cover Minneapolis. That's the AWA, and and you get you. I, I saw them in the summer, and that was it, and then. I, when they were with me, they traveled with me. I didn't every I didn't every days off. When I was a world champion, from eighty one to like eighty eight, I probably averaged maybe two days off a year. Twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday. That's it. I um, mean, Australia, Tokyo, Singapore, <laughs> back to St. Louis, over to Chicago, back to Tokyo. I'd be, I'd be in Tokyo one week a month. You can't yeah, like, get, uh -huh. and you can't take you out either because they're making money and they need to make money. They need well, you. You're under marquee. And you don't make work, boy. I'm telling you, it was the end. So and I'm, I'm I'm lucky. I only missed one shot in all the time that I was a world champion. But I had 104 fever. And I just finally said, which I've wrestled with before, but 104 fever. You you you, you can't even keep your balance. And I I just said to the guy. I told the guy. I said, Eddie, I'm not coming. I just can't, I can't do it, you know. And, and actually, that was I felt bad saying it, but I wanted to spend a day home with my family, especially when I was six. I didn't know about the only time. Do you think you're the greatest NWA champion of all time? At least I know we're saying goat is you know is kind of a different. Do you think you're the greatest NWA champion? At least got to be right. Most colorful, <laughs> not not the greatest. No, pretty hard to say anybody better than Harley Race. I got to go with Harley Race on that note. Um, and, and Harley Race was the world champion. Make no mistake. And he made it very clear to everybody in every bar, every night, every town. Mm -hmm. and he knocked the quarters off the pool tables. I got the winner. <laughs> 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 One night he slammed Andre, suplexed him, and Andre kicked out on two. I'm, I'm watching this. I never saw anything like it in my life. The 
as soon as before Andre would go to New York, it was when he was traveling around, right? So I go over to Harley and I go, like like a like, like a mark. I go, Harley, did you ask him before? He, did you ask him if you could do that to him? Ask him what? I said, big man, slam, suplex, kick out on two and a half. Why would I ask him anything? I'm Harley Blaze. <laughs> but shit, I was seeing it in bars too. Wow. They were thinking of that fucking tough wrestler. You know, he's left handed with that iron bar in his hand, right? You yeah. know about that, right? From the car wreck that killed yeah. him. Yeah. This thick from here to here to his wrist. He almost lost his arm. This thick a piece of metal that wide right here, right? Say smoke and someone say something smart to him. <laughs> Are you sure you want to ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you phony wrestler. Okay. Wow. I mean, move their face. <laughs> Space and time. Then headbutt the guy next to him and the shit was on. <laughs> wow. I've heard he's knocked out two guys with one punch. There's a guy in front of him and a guy behind him. And he, elbow. Uh, no, what he, what he, what he, hit, <laughs> he hit like a cement block. He hit, he knocked the one guy who was standing five feet away. He about killed the first guy. When he, when he still said with his hand, right? When he said phony wrestler. He hit him and the guy behind him. Bam. Completely demolished his, uh, oh. nose. And then, then he grabbed the guy and turned around. His head bottom broke his nose. Both of them laying there. Oh man, <laughs> and he ordered a beer. <laughs> Another beer, please. <laughs> he took it from the girl. Why did we break you up? You have no idea. <laughs> a little bit of an atmosphere than today in the locker room. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Leon, you big fat. Baby, get off your fat ass. That's what they wait for the computer. Can't imagine yeah. anybody talking to Vader like that. Yeah. <laughs> See, these are just the great stories that like we're turning into like comic book fact and fiction. You know, I just all of these guys are not short for Harley Race. Yeah. He took this guy that thought he was tough into a bathroom in Kansas City, and when the guy came out, he had no hair. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled all his hair up. I mean, big pants. Wow. The guy walked out, he looked like um, one of the three stooges. Patch hair, patch hair, patch hair. Her, Harley pulled out his hair. I was, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I got, I got a thousand more for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But, uh, James, give us uh, one last big push for Codename Ric Flair, the Ric Flair comic. So uh, we have ash cans available right now, which an ash can is. It's basically the origin story, how he got – his special powers to become a secret agent and uh, it's 14 page preview we have three different versions the normal version a uh, i'm not sure if people can see this but it's a spot holofoil limited 300 copies and then we did what's very popular in comics is this metal version but one thing we also have is because of our relationship with the printer we got the printer plates these one of one collectibles and rick was nice enough to sign this is the cover uh there's a yellow magenta scion or blue and black but we're uh, the day of his last match. We're launching a Kickstarter for the full issue number one. It's uh, Magic Eight Ball is the mission that he goes on, and like we said earlier, it's like what's fact, what's fiction. Um, only Rick knows. So, yeah, real excited about it. Again, this is hopefully one of many, and uh, with Kelly and, and Rick, it's it's a lot of fun, and we're really excited to finally bring this forward. You can get it at RickFlairComic.com. We're very excited. I just have to say one more, John. Yes. Let's say uh, let's say hypothetically that, that Harley walked in here right now. Yeah. And I introduced him to Kelly, and then Kelly went home. Right. She lives in, in B Tower, in two different, we're in two different buildings. Yep. Ricky, <laughs> tell me more about Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> It's the first thing you'd say to me. Not about the comic book? 
about the comedy. <laughs> What are you doing? Hey, you'd be ashing on this. Uh, <laughs> the last time I saw Harley, he was uh, he was wheelchair bound. He was, he was yeah. at an autograph signing in Philly. Yeah. Still had that grip, whatever. Oh, my God. And, okay. and I was with. Uh, yeah, he'll, he'll never lose that. He was he, he's a different cat. You know? It's like almost like a bear claw. You know what I mean? Like, but, he, yeah. he, you got to strengthen your hand when he gives you that handshake. He's he going to break a, it. He had a double tendon strength. Yeah, he was. And so, you know, I mean, he, he should have died three or four times, you know, in different related accidents that he was in. He was just a very tough guy. I was there at the end, and I was at the funeral, thank God. But he, he it's hard to think any, anybody could ever be called better than Harley Race, in my mind. Except you, maybe. In my mind, it's got to be you. But uh, Ron, uh, I was with Ron Garvin that day, another guy you had awesome match oh, yeah, with. Yeah, the, we those, beat each other, too. Yeah, <laughs> those Ron. chop fests were great. Yeah, how's he doing? He was doing very good. He actually seems like he's like still in great shape because I think he's, I think he's oh, maybe yeah, he's a little bit older than you, but he seems like he's in great shape as well. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. Good guy. But I said, I said, hey, do you think you could take Harley? I meant like in his prime, but he looked at him, he goes, he goes, I still couldn't take him, even if he's in the wheelchair. If Harley could bite, move his hands or anything, <laughs> he wasn't afraid to bite you either. Oh, man. No. But I love how the comic is coming out right around when StarCast and Jim Crockett Promotions and Ric Flair's last match, it all is kind of coming together. Your merchandise through the roof, everything that Conrad, Conrad Thompson, of course, your son-in-law, yeah. Connie, as I affectionately call him, he's got so much good merchandise stuff. So, I mean, the roast, your last match, StarCast, the merch, you got it all going on, and the comic book. you got everything going on right now. I'm very excited. Thank you. Rick, thank you so much for all the time. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, James. But, of course, thank you to the greats. Thank the greatest of all time is the go. Nature boy. Great your time, sir. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, hey, James. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have to hear that's awesome. Thank you.